You know that feeling when you're about to add a feature and you can already tell this is going to hurt? Not because it's complex and not because you don't know how, it's because the code base won't let you do it cleanly. You touch files you shouldn't, you break things you shouldn't break, and you test things that shouldn't need testing. We've all been there. This is where inversion of control or IOC in short helps you turn a code base you fight into one you can work with. Before we talk about inverting control, let's define what control even is. In code, control is who decides how an action happens. Take a typical setup. Your player controller handles everything. You check input get key down to jump, you call debug.log for logging, and you notify the game manager when health hits zero. When you write it this way, you give the control to player controller. It decides what happens, and more importantly, how it happens. But that works until requirements change. Design patterns were invented for a reason. Let's see why. On the surface, everything looks legit. But the moment requirements change, being this specific can hurt. Take logging, for example. In production, you might want to limit noisy logs and probably even send them to your backend instead of writing them locally. Same story with input. You want to let players rebind jump instead of hardcoding the space key. By the way, that's the direction Unity took with their new input system. Let's look at this in a typical Unity code base. Here's a game manager. It loads progress on startup and saves it when the player's levels up. To make that happen, it instantiates a save system in a way. Actually, after seeing a lot of Unity code bases, the save system will probably be either a monobehavior singleton or a static class. So let's fix it real quick. That's it. Now it looks more realistic. In this code, the game manager class has multiple responsibilities. Managing player state, knowing where to save and load the data, and deciding when to save or load. But now your product manager wants cloud saving for premium players. So let's get rid of the noise and concentrate on the level up method. One way is to introduce a simple branch here and to invoke the relevant save system depending on the premium status. But then you might notice that you have to do something similar with the settings code. When you had a one-liner, code duplication was acceptable. But now you have multiple lines repeating themselves in multiple places of your code base. You might think, let's just move the branch logic into the save system. Exactly. This is where IOC starts. Move the where to save decision out of classes into a single place. Oh, I completely forgot it must be static. Whoopsie. But on a serious note, we just moved the headache from one place to another. We also introduced a circular dependency. Separate topic, so we'll just flag it and move on. To take the inversion of control a step further, we can create two separate systems. Next step is to stop using them as static methods. Instead, we can implement a common interface with the same save method. Then we can create a factory that will construct as the appropriate save system. To summarize, inversion of control flips who decides how things happen. Instead of each class choosing the implementation, it asks for a capability and lets something else decide how to fulfill it. Think of it this way. When you go to a restaurant, oh you don't hand the chef a recipe or step-by-step -step instructions. You order the dish and the kitchen prepares it their way. But inversion of control oh isn't a single trick. It's a principle you apply with different patterns. Here are the ones you hit most in Unity. First, factory pattern. This is what you just saw. Sometimes you need to create objects at runtime, not only at startup. A factory inverts who decides how to construct them. Settings class doesn't build the save system. It just asks for one. With DI, a class declares what it needs and gets it from the outside, usually via constructor. Service locator works like a central directory. Your class looks up the service it needs at the moment it needs it. Unlike DI, no dependencies are provided at construction time. The class resolves them on demand. It's often criticized as an anti-pattern. 
mainly for hiding dependencies and effectively turning your architecture into a black box. But sometimes it can be pretty handy. With template method, you define the skeleton of a flow in a base class and let derived classes provide the implementation. In Unity, you encounter this daily with lifecycle methods like start or an update. The engine controls when they run and you control what they do. So, why care about IOC? Three reasons. First, testability. Unit testing deserves its own video, so we won't go into much details here. But if hundreds of your tests are called in the cloud, your build pipeline won't stand a chance. With inversion of control, you can replace the actual service with some kind of a mock, making your tests fast, offline, and more reliable. Next, flexibility. In game development, requirements change constantly. Different platforms need different implementations, marketing asks for A-B testing, players want cloud saves, Steam brings its own achievement system. With IOC, you can just swap implementations while the core logic stays untouched. And last but not least, maintainability. When classes have single responsibility and depend on abstractions, changes stay localized. Imagine you have player, settings, and inventory, all depending on iSafe system. Internally, we might have multiple implementations. Now, Let's say you need to fix a bug in the cloud safe system. Maybe it isn't handling network timeouts properly. With IOC, you modify only the cloud safe system class. Layers, settings, and every other class using iSafe system remain untouched. No ripple effects, no retesting the whole game, and certainly no midnight emergency patches because you broke something unrelated. Conversion of control is one of those concepts that can fundamentally change how you approach architecture. It's not about making your code more complex, it's about making it more adaptable. Start small. Pick one tightly coupled system in your code base, extract an interface, inject the dependency. You'll see how much easier it becomes to test, modify, and extend. Once you start thinking in terms of IOC, you write code that embraces change instead of fighting it. Keep on creating, and I'll see you in the next one.